Step 2. Analog to digital. In this step, we will discuss how to send signals. So first, let's begin by trying to abstract what communication is. Usually, we have somebody who is trying to send the message to a certain recipient. So what we have to do with the message is we have to encode it into some suitable form that can be then transmitted through a medium and then on the other hand, decoded by the receiver and, and read out. For example, if we're talking about the electrical telegraph, the, center, uh, the sender brings a message to the telegraph company where they talk to the um, Morse code operator, or the Morse, Morse key operator, who encodes the message into the Morse code, sends it down the electrical wire, and on the other hand, uh, on the other side, uh, the operator uh, then decodes the message, writes it out in legible form, and gives it to the recipient who can then read the message. So, the question that we are facing now is, what are the best ways of transmitting the message? So, let's begin by thinking what we are and how do we fit into the world. The world is analog. For example, we can hear sounds, speech, music. These are all analog signals. They've got a smoothly varying amplitude. Touch. We can touch how smooth things are. We can touch, we can feel how hot things are. Same with sight. We can see different colors of different frequencies. And there are continuous spectrum of colors that we can see. So, it also makes sense that we are very good uh, at processing this type of information because we, evolved, we have evolved methods to process this type of information. So, let's try and send messages using analog signals. So, formally, we, we can do something like this. We, the analog signal is a continuous wave that varies over time smoothly. And the value of it, each point in time carries some meaning of the message. So, the center wishes to uh, encode this continuous signal. So what they do is they have got some time varying quantity T. It could be temperature, it could be music, it could be anything. The center has to then encode this uh, uh, message T into a continuous analog signal S that is then transmitted to the receiver where it must get uh, decoded. So just to see what happens visually, over time, we, we are generating some type of signal. So you can see that it's a smoothly varying curve and it has a different values at different times. And this is in fact how old telephones used to work, how AM radios used to work, how old TV broadcasting used to work. But the problem with this uh, type of transmission is that it's very susceptible to noise. Uh, maybe some of you have heard that uh, AM radios and old TV broadcasts, you had these antennas which you always had to fiddle around to find the best possible place to receive the clearest signal. And even then, it was nothing uh, uh, like the signals that we are used to today, particularly when it comes to uh, TV and image quality. So analog signals are very susceptible to noise because even small changes introduced by the noise can have very big differences in terms of the meaning of the message. And for, a for the same reason, actually, uh, these signals are very difficult to copy. Always when you try to copy an analog signal, you are degrading the signal, because you can only copy it with a certain amount of accuracy. So here is the example where our orange, smooth, original message that we are trying to transmit is affected by some noise and it gets deformed into this blue curve, like that. And this blue curve can have a meaning that's similar to our original message, so maybe it's not so bad, or it can have a meaning that completely destroys the meaning of the original message. How about digital signals? Digital signals are very different from analog signals in the sense that they only use a discrete set of values to represent the message and encode it. So, if we take our original analog signal, this orange line, and we try to encode it digitally, what we would do is we would take the values of the signal at some discrete time steps. We would do it at T0, T1, T2, and so on. 
and at each time the signal has a different value. So we record the values uh, s at time t0 and call it s0. We would record the value of the signal at uh, time t1 and call it s1 and so on and so forth. So really what we are now transmitting is not the signal itself. What we are transmitting is more akin to a table like this, that at this time you have this value, at the next time we have that value, at this time we have the other value. So this is the essence of sending digital signals. And you can already see from this picture that the accuracy with which we can reproduce this signal depends how often we look and measure this signal, which is known as the sampling rate. So, for example, for very slowly varying signals, we don't have to sample that often, and we will still do a pretty good job of recreating the signal. But for something uh, varying very fast, we should uh, sample also with higher frequency. And you can see it, for example, over here at the beginning, our signal uh, doesn't change so much. So we don't actually need all these steps in between to have a good reproduction of the signal. However, in these lines where the signal just jumps by quite a big step, if we just left out these samples in between, these two blue dots, we, will, we would have lost a lot of information about the original signal. On the other hand, digital signals are less affected by noise because now we don't have a smooth spectrum. We only have discrete values. And they are cheaper to produce, they are uh, more easily processed, and they are better for the bandwidth. 